Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode of Recreating Moog Defam in PD Vanilla. Today I'll show you how to redesign the VCO DK and the sequencer. So without further ado, let's dive in. The idea behind the VCO DK is to start a sound with a higher frequency than the frequency produced when the envelope is producing its tail. So we want to have a tail with a consistent sound, a very consistent low end, but a transient and attack phase with a punchy and clear sound. We can use a V-line. We can set this V-line in a way that it generates a ramp that can be multiplied by the bass frequency produced by the SIG. So First, we connect the V-line to a multiplication. So we take the signal from the SIG, we send it here, the multiplication inside the tab OSC4. And for the V-line, we can link a message where we say start from the value 2, so reach that value immediately, then go to 1 in a certain time, 100 uh, milliseconds, after a delay of 0 milliseconds. So we'll start the sound with 2 multiplied by 70, so 140, and after 100 milliseconds, the sound will be multiplied, uh, the signal will be multiplied by 1, so 70 hertz. Now we need to link this message to the bank produced by uh, the envelope. So here I can delete this metro and I can apply a, a simple bank so we can trigger it manually. So send and we can call it env bank and here receive env bank. Now we can have a listen. Before I remember you that we have the envelope defam env, which is split. So the first two envelopes uh, are going to bring up the volume for this oscillator, while the uh, last two uh, controls this one. So I'm going to di disconnect this one. So we can have a listen just to the second oscillator. Of course, if we increase this value, we'll produce at first a higher frequency. The original VCO DK is a common knob that controls both VCO1 and 2. What I want to do here is to generate two separate uh, DKs so that we'll be able to produce accents and different timbres uh, between the two oscillators. So what I'm going to do now is to simply copy and pasting the same uh, elements for VCO1. So great. Now everything is working correctly. What we can do now is to get rid of the top right display since we'll add it at the very end of this tutorial. So let me bring it down here. So maybe in the future we'll remember about it. The next step is to modify this VCO DK value and trying to link it with the defam and DK time. What we can do is to send this DK time. On top here we can receive DK time. We can change this value with a dollar sign. Set dollar one that is connected to a uh, number box. We need to connect this bank to the number box. 
Okay, by now the frequency of 70 it's produced just at the very end of the decay line. So what we can do is to connect this number box to an expression where we say take the incoming value and multiply it by let's say 0 0.2. So what we are saying is hey we want the VCO decay time to be the 20% of the overall envelope. Let's set this to 100 and here we have 20. So maybe the 20% is a little bit uh, too low so we can increase it to the 30%. Of course, these parameters are not predetermined, so it's up to you to tweak all of them and trying to find the best solution. Now I need to copy and paste all this system for the first oscillator, so see you in a couple of seconds. An extra feature I want to add now is the uh, control over the slope of the VCO decay. So we can take uh, the output of a V-line, connect it to a POW tilde, let's say 2, and reconnect it to the multiplication sign. Now we can add a number box so that we can change this parameter on the run. So let's uh, set its limits between 1 linear and let's say 10. Now that the VCO decay is finished, we can move on and sketch out the sequencer. So I'm going to use a metro with a toggle connected to a float that increases its value each time it receives a number. We can apply a mod 8. So we can select 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. So these are the uh, 8 banks. Since we need to, we want to replicate an 8 step sequencer. From here we can add two rows. The first one can be the row that controls if a sound should play or not. So we can use a spigot with a toggle. So if the toggle is on, uh, we'll let the bank pass through. If not, the spigot is closed, so we'll not hear the sound. We can link the spigot to a sand sequencer bank. We can copy and paste this so that we can connect uh, each spigot to the corrective uh, bank output. To make things uh, easier to read, we can change the color uh, of these toggles. So we go inside properties, background, we can set their color to orange. Unfortunately, I forgot to do it with the first one, so I have to do it manually. My bad. See you in a couple of seconds. Now that the sequencer is finished, we can turn on some steps. And we can connect the send sequencer bank to uh, the envelope generator, so receive Sequencer bang. Let me see if we are okay. You go here, link to the flow and the send uh, envelope bang. Instead of using this send envelope bang, we can simply change the receive envelope bang with sequencer bang. And now we can have a listen.
Okay, everything seems to work fine. Now we can add the second row to send frequencies. I'm going to use a float that is connected to each uh, cell output. From here, we can use a slider. Uh, I don't remember the shortcut, horizontal slider. Nope, vertical slider. Here you are. We can change its size. So let's say 30 by, nope, 80. Okay, and we can change its color as well. Since I want to connect the slider to a MIDI to frequency, I want uh, the slider to output only integer. So I connect it to an integer uh, object that is sent to the MIDI to frequency. And finally to the float. I don't want to have an extreme range of frequencies. So to visualize the output of uh, the slider and the output of MIDI to frequency, we can apply two number boxes. So if we output zero, we get eight hertz, which is too low. Let's say that the lowest frequency can be 30 hertz. So from 22, lowest value from the slider, to Let's see the highest could be 120. So from 30 hertz to 8000, I think that's a pretty uh, decent frequency range. Now we can copy and paste all this. Down here, we can add two sends objects. The first one sends frequency one and the other one sends frequency 2, which will uh, route to each VCO1 and 2. Uh, here, once again, we can alternate even and odd uh, values, index numbers. Connect the receive frequency 1 to the frequency VCO1. and the receive frequency, oops, I missed a Q here, so frequency two and frequency one. And now everything should work. Now that the overall system is working, we need to uh, adjust a few things. By now, the DFAM env is sharing its envelopes to both VCO1 and 2, alternating its odds and even outputs. If you want to play both VCO1 and 2 simultaneously, which is the original behavior of DFAM, we need to unlink these outputs. Let me uh, make everything smaller so it's easier to adjust. And we need to take this defam env, copy and paste it. We send the cell zero to the correspective input. Zero, one, two, three. I think I missed something or no. No, everything is fine. Then the decay goes over here, the time here as well. Now that we have duplicated the defam ends, we need to adjust the sequencer. So each float output needs to go inside both set frequency one and set frequency two. The next step is to add a 
mixer where we can control the level for both VCO1 and 2. Let me add one more multiplication uh, object. Here we can apply a slider, so horizontal slider this time. We can normalize its value between 0 and 1. We can send it here, copy and paste, same thing for the VCO1. Or we can change the color, let's say green. And we can connect each uh, VCO output to a division tilde 2 um, so that it's safer for us to divide their signal since they are two. We don't want to uh, clip the signal. I forgot to add the noise source, so we can add it uh, here. Let me bring it on top or down here as well. Same thing for you. We can connect the noise source to a slider. I'm sorry, noise generator. We forgot about you. You can go here. Having the noise signal at level 1 could be uh, too much, so I'm going to set its maximum value to 0 0.5. Now that I have connected the final output to the DAC, I can send the same audio signal to the tab right, and we can visualize the signal from here. We set both volumes, so VCO1, VCO2. I think that we can write inside the slider. Let me see uh, VCO2 level. On top it's, it's fine as well. This one is noise level. And here we have VCO1 level. Great. From this point, the noise is not shaped by the envelope, so we need to connect it uh, inside its right multiplication sign, which is this one. Now, I don't like this horrible cable. So we can do something like send audio, noise, and here we can receive tilde noise. One's for you, and the other one for you as well. So now you can stay down here so that we have all three faders uh, at the same level. Now that the core system is almost finished, it's up to you to experiment tweaking all these parameters. In the next episode, we'll see how to implement the filter section, so stay tuned. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next episode.